My name is Mark Green, and for the past 50 plus years, I've been working in the family business called Hobby Lobby. For me, it all started out at the age of nine, gluing frames for seven cents each. I've had an incredible life, getting to experience a business that grew from $600 in 1970 to over a thousand stores all across America. I've also got to experience what the Lord is doing around the world through a variety of kingdom initiatives. It has been mind blowing all that the Lord has allowed me to see. At times I've said, I don't know why God did it, but he gave me one of the best seats on the bus with the best view. But I've also experienced periods of life that felt like I was in a wilderness, a time when the view was not so good. All I could do was see trees and the trees went on for miles in every direction. And I had no idea which way to go to get out of the wilderness. I'd like to share one of those wilderness experiences with you. I was sweating, disoriented, and desperate. The singing was in Cantonese and I couldn't understand it, but still it touched me so deeply that I started to cry. It was 120 days earlier, I had been challenged by a group of men and women to do something way over my head. But to say I was overwhelmed by this experience was an understatement. As I just shared, it was like I was lost in a wilderness and had no idea which way to go to get out. So I pulled the trump card. I had heard about this trump card, but had never felt the desperation to pull it out until that day, June 23rd, 1998. I prayed, Lord, I'm going to fast one meal a day till you send me someone to do what I was challenged to do. I was desperate enough that fasting sounded like a good idea. Like someone who thinks tithing is a pinnacle of giving, I thought fasting one meal the next day was going to take me to the mountaintop. After that point, God was speaking deeply into my life that year, so I expected an answer to come quickly. Every day those first few days, I was expecting a miracle. But one month went by, then two, three months. Now four months later, I was still fasting one meal a day and waiting on God. I had to go on a business trip to Hong Kong and wasn't sure what to do concerning my fast. With my legalistic spirit, I didn't want to accidentally break my fast and have to start all over again. But I also knew I would be served meals and snacks on my three upcoming flights. As I boarded the first plane, I said a quick prayer. Lord, I'm not sure how to keep this one meal a day fast, so I'll fast completely until I get hungry, then I'll eat. I expected to take the 24-hour trip to Hong Kong, get some rest on the plane, and then get up first thing the next morning and have a wonderful breakfast and return to fasting one meal a day. So I arrived in Hong Kong, went to my hotel, and the next morning found a restaurant for breakfast. But strangely, I wasn't hungry. So I kept fasting. Then I went to lunch that afternoon, and again, I wasn't hungry. The same thing happened at dinner. What's going on, I wondered. To my amazement, it continued all week. I would go to restaurants expecting to have an appetite, but I had no desire for food. Instead, I was eager to see how the Lord would speak to me halfway around the world. It was Wednesday evening in Hong Kong, and I decided to attend church service there for the first time. The church was in a part of Hong Kong that was not as visitor friendly as the parts I was used to. I got a little turned around trying to find the building. It was dark, and finally, after searching and searching for the location, I found the church and walked in, 20 minutes late for the service. I was sweating, disoriented, and desperate. The singing was in Cantonese, and I couldn't understand it, but still it touched me so deeply that I started to cry. Again, I prayed, Lord, it's going to be difficult for me to hear from you since I don't understand Cantonese. After the hour-long worship time, I was tired and ready to sit down. A guest speaker was introduced as a pastor from Indonesia who didn't speak Cantonese. Indeed, he would be preaching in English with a Chinese interpreter. I thanked the Lord. I listened with my notepad in hand, ready to write down anything the Lord would speak to my heart. Here I was in the midst of the longest fast I'd ever done, and twice the pastor shared about people who fasted for 40 days. Lord, anything but that, I prayed. But the only thing I could remember from that sermon was the fasting for 40 days part. Yikes. When the trip was over and I arrived back home, my wife tugged me and said, Ooh, you sure feel thin. I told her I hadn't eaten since I left, more than seven days prior. At first she was very concerned about my health until I shared how the Lord was uniquely working in my life. Back home, I joined my family for many meals and teamed to eat if I got hungry, but for 40 days, I never did. It was a miracle. Not only had God sustained me through four months of fasting, one meal a day, and then on top of that, a 40-day fast, but God spoke to me in powerful ways too. 
He gave me vision and clarity for the initiatives before me, and he also gave me a defining phrase that would help me focus on my life's purpose. I learned that God doesn't speak any louder when I fast, I just listen better. My 40-day fast ended on Thanksgiving Day, 1998. And as I looked back through my Bible at all the verses the Lord used to minister to me, the theme I saw emerging from my 40 day of reading the New Testament Psalms and Proverbs in the message version was less of me. It started with Matthew 5 and 3. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there's more of God and His rule. This book is alive. It was ironic because I had lost 47 pounds. I'd gone from 177 pounds to a skinny, 130 pounds, six foot man. So in a physical sense, there was less of me. But spiritually, I noticed my desire for the things of this world were lessened as well. Through fasting, the Lord was teaching me what John the Baptist once said, he must increase and I must decrease. That's found in John 3 and 30. More of Jesus, less of me. Dying to self is still a daily battle, but since 1998, fasting has become a regular part of my life. Each year, I stop getting hungry 40 days before Thanksgiving. I drink juices until I get hungry. Those extended fasts have lasted anywhere from nine to 40 days. John Piper has a quote that better describes my passion for fasting. Fasting is not a no to the goodness of food or the generosity of God in providing it. Rather, it is a way of saying from time to time that having more of the giver surpasses having the gift. Our family mission statement is love God intimately, live extravagant generosity. Since we came up with that mission statement over 10 years ago, I have been adding to my list of ways to love God intimately. Presently, there are 31 gateways, as I call them, to pursue intimacy with God. One of the gateways is fasting. Fasting is a rest from food, an intentional restriction that gives our physical bodies the chance to rest from eating. There are lots of physical benefits to fasting, repairs your cells, benefits to the brain and the heart, may prevent cancer, weight loss, etc. None of those were my passion for fasting. They were side benefits. We fast why? Because intimacy with God is our highest calling. What started for me as a wilderness experience that was overwhelming led to seeing the Spirit of God lead me onto some incredible adventures. While the adventures out of the wilderness included getting wounded and being uncomfortable, seeing the provision of God in my life made it all worthwhile. I'd like to challenge you to start the discipline of fasting in your life now. It is one of the gateways of intimacy with God, and I don't want you to miss that. If I had to boil it all down, I believe during fasting, God invites us to come closer to Him. That is my hope for you. James 4 and 8 says, come close to God, and God will come close to you. This book is alive. So I want to pray with you. Lord, I thank you for the wilderness adventure that you take us on. It is during this time of being disoriented and desperate that we find you. May each of us come closer to you. And as we do, may we experience you coming closer to us. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son to come close and live with us, to experience humanness, to walk where we walk. We are grateful that you took our place on the cross as you died for us. We're even more excited that three days later, you defeated death and the grave, showing us that you are bigger than death and that someday we will experience a new heaven and a new earth. May everything we do bring you glory. Amen.